Nigeria, a country with a land mass of approximately 923,768 square kilometers, taking up position as the 32nd largest in the world. Most of its surface is covered with an attractive green vegetation and rich brown earth depicting nature's abundance. Yet its true wealth lies beneath an untapped treasure of almost limitless proportions, enormous solid mineral deposits, forgotten wealth or neglected bounty. I will be faithful and bear true allegiance the coming of President Muhammadu Buhari brings with it a paradigm shift. He takes a leap of faith to revive the solid mineral sector this perfectly feeds into the diversification stands of the administration. In less than two years in office, the Federal Executive Council, chaired by President Muhammadu Buhari, gives an express approval for a well-articulated project to bridge the geoscience data gap in the industry which had been the valley of death that scared investors away. The National Integrated Minerals Exploration Project, NIMEP. Well, the NIMEP project it is a National Integrated Mineral Exploration Project. Uh, it's uh, first of its kind uh, uh, in the sector. And uh, we need to give, uh, to appreciate and uh, be grateful uh, to President Mohamed Dubari because the sector has never had that kind of windfall. This is a 15 billion naira project. With the kind of budgeting cycle that we have in the ministry, we could never have undertaken such a gigantic project uh, within our budget limits. But um, the ministry, through the then uh, minister, uh, Governor Fayemi, who is now a governor of Ekiti State, applied to the president and were granted an intervention fund of about 30 billion naira. And out of that, judiciously, 50% of that was allocated to a NIME project because mining is all about exploration. So, as big as that money may sound, there's still a small amount of money. Uh, compared to the quantum and the volume of work that we have to do when it comes to exploration. So that money could only cover four minerals, essentially. In March 2017, the process started with the advertisement published in the Federal Tenders Journal and, in August 2018, final contracts awarded. What many thought was an unrealistic journey to mining prosperity became a reality in September 2018 when the ambitious NIMEP was flagged off in Suleja, Niger State by the Federal Ministry of Mines and Steel Development. The Nigerian Geological Survey Agency NGSA, serves as the secretariat to these all-important projects and this man, a seasoned geologist and the Director General of the NGSA, is the chairman of the Ministerial Monitoring and Implementation Committee for the successful delivery of this project. A square peg in a square hole at last. Nations decide the best course of action that will enable them achieve their national objective. So having looked at what we have done, the NIMAMOC, the accelerated mapping, we felt, look, the best way to address this is to carry out investigation, which we call boots on ground. So that is the genesis of the NIME project. Currently, NGS is also doing some activity investigation in the bitumen belt. Now, you will recollect that the minister has once mentioned that uh, the Ministry of Mines and Steel Development will concession some of the bitumen blocks by the end of the year. We are working assiduously to ensure that we meet this target we set for ourselves. The essence of the project or the, what we are doing is this. We have known that we have bitumen in the country. A round of bidding or two rounds of bidding, bidding was done some time ago. But unfortunately, it did not crystallize in the development of the bitumen project. Most of the licenses were revoked. The reason being that the necessary baseline information to encourage the investors to come into the sector were not there. 
So at this time out, we reviewed all that has happened and we felt, look, NGSC as an institution and the technical institution in the ministry should carry out investigation on this bitumen so that we should be able to provide information to investors that, look, these are the areas we have bitumen in. So that when you issue the licenses, because in the previous exercise, some areas that were issued as, as licenses don't even have bitumen at all. But we want to ascertain this time before giving the licenses. So, and that is what we are doing successfully now. And in some areas, part of the state, we have seen we have large, thick uh, beds of uh, bitumen and in multiple layers within the bitumen bed. Our rig is in Edo State currently, and we are working because Block B of uh, the bitumen block is already dense with some information, so we want to provide necessary geoscience information on Block A and Block C, so as to complement the bid exercise and make sure that if you are given a license, there won't be any complaint that there is no bitumen. At least there will be one hole or two holes around that area to prove that uh, there is uh, bitumen in those areas. The first phase of the project is divided into five lots, handled by five exploration companies and three consultants with specific mineral commodities, gold, iron ore, lead and zinc, barite and rare earth metals. The supervising companies and consultants with the brief are to generate global appeal towards the derived data. Lot A1C1 by AG Vision Limited and Total Earth. Lot A2C2 Rapid Links Resources Limited. Juggernaut Industries Limited takes charge of Lot A3C3. Dapmat Drilling and Mechon Engineering Services Limited responsible for Lot A4C4. While the National Steel Raw Materials Exploration Agency takes care of Lot A5C5. We were able to actually make interesting finds. Specifically, we were able to locate two prominent sites that we really consider will add to mine development in Nigeria. Specifically, there's a deposit in Tajmin Kogi State, not far from Ajakuta, that we find very, very highly prospective that can actually also um, help in development of a mine to complement Itaki iron ore mine. Similarly, the exercise led us to discovering a new iron ore region entirely that has, was not before this exercise discovered, and that's the one located in Lebalinasco in Niger State. That resource is an area where before now no iron ore works has been carried out, and the area was not known to contain iron ore mineralization until these studies. Our task covered the uh, exploration for gold and platinum group elements, or what we call the PGEs, and so far uh, the project has been uh, completed up to 100%, and we've uh, looked almost at the western part, so our project covers the western part of the country, which is an area that is spamming more than 300,000 square kilometers. So we started from the regional targeting, and we started narrowing down on some particular uh, areas. Some of the areas that we have worked on are in uh, Zamfara, in Niger State, uh, parts of uh, the boundaries of Abuja between Abuja and Sulasia. We've worked also uh, in Elisha, We've worked in Kwara State, and we equally looked at some parts of Kaduna as well. The results are very promising. We have made a very good discovery in Zamfara State that relate to uh, some nickel and uh, some platinum as well. And equally, we've made another uh, good discovery in Niger State on gold and tungsten. Equally, there's another belt to the east of that particular belt that is running also uh, for a stretch of about 25 kilometers that is also very promising in, uh, in nickel and some platinum group elements as well. However, at this particular stage, uh, we will leave the federal government to declare the results. But what I can tell you that Nigeria is on the right track of becoming a mining destination. The results are in and they are being analyzed, have been accepted. Uh, we intend to celebrate uh, the results that we have, hopefully before the year runs out, uh, because there are five contractors uh, the way it is in, uh, in exploration, you need to have data that is believable by the international world. So they call some people competent persons. Uh, fortunately, we don't have such people in Nigeria, and most African countries don't have them. So we had to procure those people. That's why it's a bit expensive. We had to procure them from outside. These are experts. 
uh, they're co-competent persons. And any report they sign, data, it is believable in the sector all over the world. So we've got very good results. Rapid Lakes, digging deep into a metallurgical belt, covering about 325 kilometers, searching for rare earth metals. And at the end of its sizable exploration, comes back smiling. We have identified 25 prospective pegmatite bodies so far and further undertook exploration activities of 11 prospective bodies in four states. These states are Nasarawa State, Kwara State, Ekiti State, and Oshun State. These locations have been explored using all the internationally recognized exploration techniques and engaging internationally renowned competent persons. We have collected and analyzed approximately 17,000 samples and drilled approximately 5,000 meters of diamond cores. We are so excited with this project that the results we are seeing are amazing. Amazing in the sense that, you know, ordinarily, you know, from desk review, because of lack of information with rare earth minerals, there was nothing to go by. So what we're doing is novel. And from what we've discovered, we have that we found out that we are sitting on a gold mine. Some states have shown very promising and excellent results. Now, if I tell you we've seen um, statistics where the mineral content is about 60 percent, I mean, you never see that anywhere. If you see 60 percent, is huge. We've seen some locations 60 percent, some locations 30 percent, some locations 40 percent, and all of that. Now, where they mine gold and all of that, sometimes what they see is five percent. 7% and it's enough for them to go all the way and mine these minerals. Well, we've seen 60%. That's huge. So clearly, the potentials, uh, potentials are enormous. The results are outstanding. That's where we are right now. For the National Steel Raw Materials Exploration Agency, the long-awaited fortune favors the much talked about Ajo Kuta Steel Company in Kogi State through the NIMEP. Generally, it's on rare occasions that you have um, a run of mine. What I mean by run of mine is material extracted from a mine without any processing at all, fed directly. You find such, uh, such materials. No need for beneficiation. No need for beneficiation. So you find such materials. For example, we discovered there's one that's been, that we discovered in Gidambuzu. But the unfortunate part of that one is because it has, has, high, has high phosphorus content. But the touch me deposit. Can be, can be beneficiated to meet a Jakuta iron ore content requirement. Similarly, the one in Naskolibali can also be beneficiated to meet a Jakuta FE iron content. So the two are feasible. The one in Gidambuzu, which actually also that one is, um, has high FE content but has um, phosphorus challenges, might need to be blended. But Tajimi, the one in Nasco Libale, those ones can blend. We found another similar one in Enali, also not far from Ajakuta itself. The heavy content is not much, but the only thing is that that one is a capping formation, it is, but the excellent is vast, and that also be very, very interesting. Beyond these discoveries made to de risk the sector through the provision of reliable geoscience data, the architects of NIMEP took advantage to scale up domestic competence and new indigenous proficiencies in the industry. The NIMA project essentially is not an end on its own, but it's a means to an end. And as we designed the project, what we put there is that capacity building is one of the key anchors of the project. So we have what we call embed staff in the project. And the embed staff is not only geoscientists, and not only from NGSA, but from agencies you have within the ministry and geoscientists that are in the ministry so that they can understand. What we feel is missing is what we are, we are trying to address. We want influx of investment, so we should be able to speak their language. This project, one, you have consultants. The consultant, as part of the requirements, must have competent person driving on their own side, and also the contractors must have competent persons who are knowledgeable in that particular type of commodity to drive it. And that informs why uh, the, the, the successes we are having. Now, to build the capacity of our staff so that they start thinking, writing along the line of the competent person, we embed them to work with them. 
not only technical staff as a geologist or geoscientist. Across board, what we mean by this is that drillers have worked with them. Uh, technicians working with the drillers so far are also part of the capacity building exercise that we have. We are beginning to see improvement in the handling of NGSS rig and other uh, agencies that have it because of their participation working with these experts in the way they are handling our own rigs and in the projects we are doing, like the bitumen project that we are handling now. Uh, even the director general of the uh, NGSA, uh, Dr. Gawa himself, told me he has learned a lot, you know, through this process. Because, see, like I said, it's something new. When something new that has never been done before is being done, we have competent persons coming in. And on every project, we have competent person on the contractor side. Anybody that got job must have a competent person working with them. We also engage a competent person as a consultant. So on every of those projects, we have two competent persons there. That's a plus. And they're both going to sign the report. You know, these are people who are believed. Once they see them, they believe them. Once they talk, everybody in the sector believes them. So the two people will sign the report that we're going to send out there and say, yes, this is what we want to sell. So it's a plus. Our people have also learned from them. And um, there are processes in place uh, that have started to start certifying Africans themselves as competent persons. That process has started. Uh, and maybe in not too distant future, we'll be able to have more Africans that are certified as competent persons and they can sign this report, mostly that they are expatriates. For National Assembly, the National Integrated Minerals Exploration Project redefines the mining industry to be commercially viable. We are highly optimistic that the resources provided by the federal government uh, in 2018 to facilitate uh, the operations of NIMEP. Uh, I believe that by the time their report will be out, uh, we should be guided by having data, statistics, and facts that will guide this administration in its quest to ensure diversification. Because this sector is a very specialized sector. It's a very uh, it's not an easy sector to understand. There are certain guidelines and templates that make the industry work. Not everything encountered was, however, glossy and shiny. Particularly the one in Nascoli Valley. To interest you to know that our last visit there, we just had to demobilize. We had to demobilize when we didn't, when, not, when we did not plan to, because of the attack there. Because um, our team was two teams actually we sent in order to fast track the work. Immediately they had a short break. Unfortunately, that nasty incident happened. They went and attacked not very far from where our staff were working that time. And that has not been not only in Niger State. As the block one in Zamfara State, we also had to stop because of the closure of um, the ban on mining activities. So uh, that also, and that ban actually came about due to the security issues there. But thank God they're working to see how that, that situation can be improved upon. And that should clear way for mine operations to take place in the fields again. Beyond uh, the security challenges, uh, the major aspect that contributed to the delay in the submission of the report has to do with COVID. And if you look at it, basically the advent of COVID has taken maybe about one year or one year plus from our lives. And this challenge came about as a result of the fact that most of the analysis of the samples from the project has to be carried out outside the country. And based on this, if you look at some of the labs like MSA, ALS in Australia and Canada, uh, the severity of COVID there really hampered their activities. That some samples we do send that takes maybe about six weeks. You find out that even in six months, we don't get the result. So we must apologize to Nigerians that this aspect also affects some aspect of activity. Don't forget also, drilling itself, the, most of the components associated with the drilling itself are imported, like the core beads, core barrel, drilling fluid, and so on and so forth. Uh, drilling fluid, Yes, we have barrels in Nigeria, but of course, different formation, different type of drilling requires these different types of chemical for drilling. So uh, most of the com companies producing these uh, 
equipment, tools, and so on, or the laboratory, they are based outside. And they are not functioning optimally during this COVID. Thank God things are improving, and that's why we are hoping that uh, the results will come out very soon, and people will start seeing the effect of uh, uh, the, the, the NIME project on its own. Uh, the minister has once said that by the time the result comes out, one, what you will notice is it will provide information about geology, tectonic setting of Nigeria and the mineralization, which we hope and we believe will assist investors. This is the first time we are doing this kind of a thing. Basically, what we have been doing in this country is topical. Now we are adding the third dimension because we are doing drilling. And if you look at the influx of drilling equipment, drilling services uh, company in Nigeria, I'm sure this is beginning to toe the line of all envisioned by Mr. President to generate employment. And we are doing this along the mineral value chain. The machines are coming out of the forest after about two years or above. Are there new mountains to climb? The potentials are great, actually. And uh, the country is lucky. And I can assure you, there is no mineral in this world we don't have except diamond. And uh, the country is, uh, the mineral present in the country is comparable with what we have in uh, Canada. Canada has all the minerals without bauxite. We have the bauxite, but no diamond. Canada has diamond. Now, my experience with this phase is um, we've had a lot of work done, and as a result of this work, a lot of potential targets have been picked up, and which, of course, uh, the country is going to benefit from. And uh, I must say that uh, we go ahead with the phase two. Even the information we have already is interesting enough uh, that people are already interested. We can sell that information. Uh, but you see, um, the president gave us this sector, when I said us, uh, 30 billion. We want to see results. I'm confident that by the time we come out with the positive results and the responses from investors, it will be encouraged to even give us more. This time we're asking for a hundred billion. Nigeria's resolve has been that of a patient and determined digger. Could the proverbial light be about to shine at the end of the tunnel? I think Nigeria has the last, or is the last frontier of solid minerals maybe in the world. This is one of the places that have not been discovered. Our mineralization is occurring at the surface. We have one of the last orogenic gold systems that ever exist in the world that is still untapped. So the potentials are still there. Yes, it's still early days, but I believe that the people that will come at this early early stage will set the pace and will be able to, to, to harvest the low-hanging fruits, which is very important in the solid minerals industry. Because today, once you go to some other destinations that are advanced, you know, exploration will cost you more because you need to go deeper and you need to drill even deeper and set up, you know, all your resources in a way where you need to extract those minerals from a, from a, from a big depth. But here the minerals are still at the surface. And I think Nigeria is very conducive for any investment. And uh, if you follow the track in the last five or 10 years, you see that there is a lot of progress. The NIMEP is money well spent. Nigerians can uh, rest assured that, uh, the money has been well spent and uh, we will deliver. In fact, the expectation is that we'll make more than 15 billion naira when we sell the data uh, through the auction process. So uh, Nigerians are very lucky the money has been very spent very well. There is great anticipation for the final report. Its ramifications are bigger than the chapters. It is, in fact, the bridge that will link a sleeping economic giant to its prosperous future launching Nigeria up to the global mining trajectory in one sure giant leap.